Welcome to Means of Grace, a podcast produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. Hello and welcome to the Means of Grace podcast of the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Dr. Bill White Jr. and I serve as the Director of Equity and Justice Ministries for the conference. We want to thank you for joining us today, and our conversation today is with Reverend DeAndre Ash. I met Pastor DeAndre when we were in a cohort together at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm grateful for his energy and creativity and innovation in ministry. Welcome, my brother. It's good to be with you. Well, well, thank you, Dr. Bill. It's good to be with you. That was one of the, the highlights of my journey, getting an opportunity to um, to meet you and to see you uh, on a Zoom uh, session um, a few years back. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I appreciate that. And likewise, uh, Pastor DeAndre is the pastor of Snow Hill United Methodist Church and Iola United Methodist Church in Franklin, North Carolina. He is the first Black pastor to be appointed in the Smoky Mountain District and is a co-convener of the Smoky Mountain District's Justice and Reconciliation Team. He seeks to help his neighbors find life in God and peace with others. He enjoys spaces where rich tradition embraces innovation. He is a graduate of Mercer University and Columbia Theological Seminary and is married to Dr. Sheree King Ash, and they have a five year old daughter. Welcome again, Pastor DeAndre. For our listeners who may not be familiar with Juneteenth and do not understand the history, and significance of it. Please share some information about it. What is Juneteenth? Well, that's a great question and one, one that I hear fairly often from people of, uh, of all um, backgrounds. President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in, in 1863. Um, and in 1865, January 1865, the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery uh, was ratified. But it wasn't until June 19th, uh, 1865, when federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas, uh, to free those enslaved people. And uh, Juneteenth is short for June 19th, and it marks that, that special day in world history. Um, interestingly enough, on June 17, 2021, it officially became a federal holiday. Thank you for that. I'm sure you do get that question quite a bit, um, as you said, from all points of society and various communities. But why do you think Juneteenth is important? Why is it important to the African-American community and, and to all Americans, really? Dr. Bill, I learned about Juneteenth probably about 10 years ago. Um, mm-hmm. And one could assume that it is kind of a, a familiar celebration to um, every community or, or every Black community. Um, I was working with a person who was from the, the Gulf Coast, and uh, the Juneteenth celebration had been a part of her family's history for generations. And so it's believed to be one of the long, the longest standing um, African-American holidays. And so it's important for that reason. But I think it's also important because as you know, the, the ideals of this country are high and uh, difficult to achieve and difficult to live out. In fact, it's not um, without struggle um, that people in this country achieve the justice and the equity that the land promises. And it's difficult to live out. Yet any community, a person that looks up and realizes that they are marginalized, that there is a need for more equity, they can know that there is a pathway forward to that justice and to that freedom and, and to that equity. And I just believe that every community's story is important to the larger story of American history, and particularly to God's story and narrative of redemption in the world. Hey, man, I, I like the fact that you said every community's story is important yes, um, and it is directly tied to God's story and creation uh, of redemption and salvation. We hosted a podcast in February that focused on Black history and reiterated the fact that Black history is world history, that our Indeed. story is a part of a larger story and Indeed. is integral to the narrative. So I appreciate you sharing that. Dr. Bill, we, we have a we have a blessed story. Yes. Uh, in, in it, we find the story of struggle. We find the story of redemption. We find the story of freedom. Um, out of this story was birthed world leaders um, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was who was shaped by struggle, um, who was um, shaped by the civil rights movements and his gifts fit the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so because of um, our story, we have gifts to share with the world. Yes, well, we appreciate you helping us share our story. You've been responsible for planning the Juneteenth celebration in 
Howard County and Waynesville specifically for I think the past three years. Tell us about the celebration there and how it came to be. In early 2021, Reverend Linda Kelly was the district superintendent in the Smoky Mountain District. Um, I I love her dearly. She is beloved, (laughs) um, to say the least, by lots of people. But the executive director at Lake Junaluska, Ken Howell, he reached out to her. And Ken Howell, the executive director at Lake Junaluska, reached out to Reverend Kelly, and they had a conversation about having a Black Lives Matter service, a worship service at at Lake Junaluska. And if you can recall, um, tensions were high, um, to say the Mm -hmm. least, uh, nationally. And I can imagine in small pockets and communities like Haywood County, um, where Lake Junaluska is. And so in a time where folks were doing lots of virtue signaling, I thought it was quite a gesture um, for Lake Junaluska to offer to, to, to host this, this Black Lives Matter worship service. And yes. that, that phrase itself could be perceived as being contentious. And so I was, I was, I was happy to be a part of that, that planning, but the planning group broadened. And so as we brought in more voices, um, what was to be a Black Lives Matter service morphed into a Juneteenth celebration. And it was good and it was wise and it became inclusive and it became celebratory. And so our our mission, our mission was formed and uh, we brought worship and celebration and education to hundreds of people each year that we've, that we've hosted the event. Wonderful. Last year's celebration was another wonderful event, well attended, as you said, diverse, which I know is one of your emphasis um, to make sure that it was inclusive of the entire community. Yes, sir. That was uh, extremely important to us. And so we made sure in order for that to happen, that we included um, a a variety of voices, folks from different spaces and places to make sure that they had input on the planning to make sure that the vendors um, were diverse, to make sure that um, some of the performers and educators that were part of the celebration um, represented diverse voices. And uh, I think it proved to be a, a, a wise strategy. Indeed, indeed. Diverse yet focused on indeed. the story of, of African-American Black people in this country. Um, would you give us more information about this year's celebration? I understand it has grown tremendously uh, just in the past year as you've been planning and will be a little different this year. Would you tell us about that? Yes, sir. Um, a part of our mission is to is to worship, to celebrate, to educate, and to engage in, in conversations. And so each year we we lean into one or more of those um, those emphases um, from year to year. And the first year was a a worship. You know, it was, it was a worship service, and um, and we can kind of dive into the the theological underpinnings uh, uh, on that particular um, celebration. And the following year, it was more celebratory. Um, we had um, a gospel choir. Uh, we had some performers from Western Carolina University. Um, Dr. Tiffany Johnson was was amazing. Yes, she was. And, um, and this year, it's kind of morphed into a a community event, which was part of the vision of some of the uh, original planners um, of this event. The idea was that this would be this would this would start here with us. That we would include the community and eventually hand this particular celebration off to the community. And so um, there are participants from from local NAACP groups. Um, There are pastors from AME churches in the regions who in the region who are on this planning committee. And um, it's become this year will be more like a street festival. Um, so that we'll, we'll have the DJs and we'll have the moonwalks and we have the vendors and the food trucks and it'll be a celebratory event. But our hope is that this spills out in, into the community and we'll we'll rope off the street this year. But the vision is that from year to year that we're we're roping off city blocks um, in Waynesville in, in, in the time to come. And so it'll be um, Saturday, June 17th and First United Methodist Church, Waynesville, where uh, Pastor Keith Terman is, is the pastor. Um, they'll be the host site. Um, but we'll we'll take up that street in, in front of his church and it's going to be a hopefully a citywide celebration from 4 to 7 p.m. Yes, sir. From 4 to 7 p.m. on on Saturday, June 17th. That is awesome. And who knows what it'll be next year? <laughs> who knows what it'll be next year? Who knows what it'll that's be the next way, year? That's the way God moves, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That was one of my um, positive learning moments um, kind of in, in, in the Methodist circles. We sat and we planned and we talked and we thought and we prayed. And we really believe that the Holy Spirit has moved us along along this journey to, to where we are now. Hey Amen. Well, we're very grateful for, again, your innovation and your passion for ministry and for uh, this work in particular. Finally, 
I would suggest that the institution of slavery may have ended in the U.S., but the vestiges of slavery still exist. There are many current examples of racism, which by definition is institutionalized prejudice, power, and influence combined to oppress people of color. It will take everyone, particularly our Anglo white allies and friends, to confront and end the sinful practice of racism and to value others as people created in the image of God. As we close, I want to thank my friend, Pastor DeAndre Ash, and those who are listening for joining us for this Means of Grace podcast, which is produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. We invite you to share this podcast with others, and please remember that we are one body in Christ, and what affects one part of the body affects the entire body. We pray that wherever you are, God will continue to bless you and keep you in God's care. May the Lord be with you. Peace and love. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Means of Grace, a podcast produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. We hope you enjoy listening to these podcasts and use them as a way to stay connected to our community. Remember to subscribe to Means of Grace for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please leave us an honest rating and a review. It helps others find this podcast. Follow the WNCC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at WNCCUMC. Once again, that's at WNCCUMC. Means of Grace is produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church and Andy Goh of Gojo Studios.